You know what? That doesn't sound very good, does it? Welcome to episode 13 on the Bajo Quinto. We have done everything to this thing and more, except to make it actually play. The whole playlist is up there um, from the time I drug it out of a store window where it was baked and warped and the sides were blown off all the way to the promises for the last two and now the third episode that I had put the back on it which I actually have not but look everything in there has been replaced but it still looks terrible on the outside and that's what I like so you'll remember in the last episode about fretting we actually cut a piece of the fretboard out and put a pickup in the neck. Um, only people who build coffee can guitars like me. Have you ever seen one of my coffee can guitars? I'll show you how to build one right up there right about now. But I saved this episode with the back off because I am going to show you how to wire this pickup with a tone and volume control and address one of the biggest issues that we're going to have and that is how do you take a guitar that has a wooden top a wooden bridge and ground metal strings we're going to solve that mystery today let's get to the bench okay guys jumping shots again whatever but this Bajo Quinto, I've had spool clamps on this thing for the better part of two weeks because the bracing on everywhere had to settle into itself. These sides were all warped out and cracked and everything. So we put a new bottom on it. And the trick to this is to try and get the bottom and the sides to come together. And of course, once all that happens, I've got to glue this up and make sure that the neck is lined up this way and that all has to do with the way the back is going to be glued on now there's a couple things i want you to think about we're going to electrify this thing and that presents some problems there are some pickups that you can use to put in the sound hole that go directly to um an amplifier that plugs in there's no uh volume and tone and all that and we don't want that i also don't want a piezo in here that has one of those weird uh preamps on the side we're not into that thing this thing's going to be a screamer so as you know uh when we were doing the refret we cut a section of the neck out and put one of these pickups that usually mounts to a pick guard up here of course the pick guard is going to be down here on this one but we've got a couple problems First thing is, how am I going to ground the strings? Well, I'll tell you what. Have you all been around any landscape jobs where you got a big irrigation timer and the big wires go on a big property and you see this kind of stuff here? See that? If I strip that back to about here and let me get these clamps out of the way. We'll put them in this look at this can ooh ah uh huh anyway if I cut a groove right here and I take these strings and instead of going in this way if I noose them by putting the string and this round thing whatever you want to call it here if you know what that's called put it in the bottom in the comments but if I put this up here and choke it and wrap it around itself all the strings will come in contact with this piece of wire I'm going to embed right here after the after the uh, insulation is off it and then I'll run this down to the inside and that will ground the strings the next thing I have to worry about is where do I put knowing that we have fan bracing and who knows what in here where do I put the volume and tone potentiometers do I put them here? Are they going to hit a brace or something like that? So, normally, on a guitar that's not braced up and has another 16th inch of a reinforcement here, you can take one of these, which is, I'm going to show you how to make these. Um, 
I've got the footage shot already, but you take these rare earth magnets that you can get from a place that sells cheap tools and you drill just the right hole with just the right bit and press them in there and what do you know bingo you can put this inside the guitar like so make sure the polarity is up notice there is no magnet here so the polarity is good here and i just put this here and i can grab a hold of it and i can move it around I can tell where my bracing is see it stops there it stops there it wants to jump it's actually jumping over bracing inside the guitar and then as soon as I let this go I can get back on it now I could also put this on a piece of wire by drilling a hole in it right here and fish it through here and then find out with this once I get it up here if it's jumping back and forth and moving and stopping and staying smooth right here, if you follow me, the brace is running this way, I would be able to move it around, but this part would hit the fan bracing. So that would be one way of doing it. But short of all that, since I'm gonna take these spool clamps off anyway and have a look inside, um, I'll show you how we're going to mark this and then I'll show you the magnet trick even with the back off. Be right back. Before I forget, I took the love pencil out of the wink can over there and since I have the neck in place here, as you can tell, I put strings on this already and there is a little bit of tension so the neck is set right. So when I clamped the back on, I made some marks. You'll notice it down here. Everything is right up to the edge. I'm gonna put some homemade binding on here. But the front of the guitar, there's a substantial bit of the back hanging off the front. And I wanna make sure that that's lined up so that neck, again, sits like this so my action isn't really tall. I've got a gap right here to work with on the front of this bridge and this bridge is plenty thick so I could take it down a little bit but I'm going to try to get everything I can do everything I can to get the neck angle right so I give myself a head start so the action isn't that tall all right we're getting close a lot of spool clamps there right I gave you an episode about how to do um, spool clamps right up there, right about now. You've seen that a number of times. I can't tell you enough. Um, people that make these, they do a great job, but they also get into your wallet pretty deep. So, last clamp we have to take off is this puppy up here. And before I forget, I want to show you what I was talking about that is an odd shape you see that there and some of the matchbooks I'm going to use for the neck yeah I said that are in the body but remember I told you I took the where is it love pencil which is going to go right back in the wink can right now so I don't lose it I marked off how much of the back was hanging off out in front here and this is going to have to be ground off and that much right there that little mark between there and the edge will make a huge difference in your neck angle but there's the inside of the back um, you saw that in a different episode moving along we're going to get to look at the bracing again and on the inside and see how everything is so this is going to be a right-handed guitar. I'm going to want to put the volume and tone right in here somewhere. So what does that look like in here? I want to make sure I've got the right side here. Well, there's a lot of bracing and everything right there, but those two sides look promising right there. They're pretty close to where I want to be. And... All I got to do now is locate my magnet. I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to go around underneath 
and I want to show you something. Watch that block of wood. You see it moving all over the place? Can you see that there? So, I want to put the potentiometer right there because it's going to miss all the bracing. You with me there? So, I can take a piece of tape and which I should have done in the first place. I've got my handy dandy tape dispenser over here. Um, you guys that haven't been around me for a long time, you got to know about this binding tape. Everything is right here and it's pretty hands-free operation. So let's try that again. I picked that off. It drops to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to put that there. There's my block. I want to put it right in here somewhere. I get the big magnet. I jump on it. And I want it to be right there. You see that? Hands free. Back to the love pencil. Don't worry, Chick Flick Teal Pointer. There we go. So I'm going to put a mark right there. That tells me where that one can be. And I want a general location of the tone pot. Bear with me, I'm getting some tape. I am ill prepared. I want that to be right about here somewhere. In the lower part, kind of here. So I'm going to go on the inside. I'm going to grab this magnet. I'm going to put this magnet about right there and then I'm going to grab onto it. Watch it move. You see that? See it moving all over the place? You see how it would define? You heard that noise before when I jump past and go over the uh, fan brace that will jump over the same thing here. It actually jumped the fan, fan brace. Look at that. Watch this. Okay, but we're going to get that to about right there. I'm going to turn it over. And what do you know? It is right here. So that's where my two will go again I dropped this if I needed to I could get another magnet on a coat hanger and fish that one out of there what else do I have to do here uh, I need to take a, a, a uh, tin snips and I want to take this corner off of here to match this rosette I'm going to cut this section of the plate out so it matches this because this is where it's been being strummed here um, and again we're going to embed a wire there to ground everything so I think it's time that we start talking about potentiometers and wiring and of course while I'm in here I don't think much of these being that long um, I could cut them off or whatever but I'm going to put um, a nut on these because I really don't see this thing coming apart again I pity the fool that has to take these off in the future but I don't see a lot of tonal quality coming out of all this you know why guys if you didn't see me put all of this in because this top was warped and bowed down so badly you need to check that playlist up there right about now all these braces all this curving yeah right up there right about now all right guys let's take care of one of our biggest concerns right away and that's how are we going to ground the strings they're metal strings all of this is wood there's nothing on here this is uh all wood so i've got an idea it's got to come in contact with the strings whatever it is so Remember the piece of wire I showed you? This is irrigation gauge wire. I'll put a little band in it. Can you see that there? Yeah. And I've taken a piece of wood 
and found the right bit by just simply drilling through here like so and I just need to make sure that I'm lined up with the camera because again we're using the overhead come on it never works when I wanted to autopsy overhead camera so I'm taking a straight edge and I've pulled up these bolts that are holding this to the bridge plate that we put in and I just leaned it like so you see that and then I'm taking a razor and just walking down that edge a couple of times and now since I know that this bit is going to fit remember the template the wire I'm going to come right over here on that mark about in two millimeters and I'm going to drill straight down through it Right, there we go perfect and we will drill another hole right there now since that is in that side I'm going to lay this across here and I'm going to put a, a magic mark or a sharpie mark right over where that hole is and then I'm going to pull this up and bend this one down right there as well you see that so what's going to end up happening now is I just can slip this in this one's bent so I can just use the hole to kind of straighten everything up like so yeah There we go, like that. Now, now that I know that that's going to work, I'm going to pull it out like so. And then I'm going to take one of my flush cut saws and I'm going to line it up right there. And I'm going to cut a slight groove. that goes over the center of both of those holes like so I know you guys are freaking but what that is going to do for me is it is going to allow me to have a little bit of some kind of adhesive to put in that slot and then we will tap this down and then straighten everything up tap it in and then after we glue the bridge down we're going to be able to take and choke these strings over the top of this so this will actually end up over here this will end up over here which will cause part of this string to touch the metal and then on the other side you see here that I can bend this over and keep it in place while this one I am just going to solder a grounding wire on it which will take it to everything that I need it to including the input jack and the potentiometers okay so this is hardly not precision made so we're gonna take this block and this hammer here and we're gonna go 
like so and make sure that that sits flat there and there now remember we have not put the bridge in yet but that will sit right there and in case something needs to be straightened out you can't beat a long nose or long needle nose pliers like so and again we've got that groove there so um, I am totally and completely and utterly disamazed with even myself now let's talk about the potentiometers okay guys you have different potentiometers that have different lengths of shafts you have different sizes you have all kinds of different things so what you want to do is you want to make sure that as I showed you we know where the bracing and stuff is so we can drill these holes and we want to make sure that there's enough shaft sticking up through there that we can put everything on there that we need to and again the benefit of leaving the back off at this time was that I could drop potentiometers all over the floor that I could get to everything right here and wire and solder and do whatever I need to do now remember People make mistakes, they start drilling holes on the wrong side and stuff. This is going to be set up to be a right-handed guitar, our stuff is going to go there. I don't want to, while I'm drilling these out, blow out the bottom. So I'll drill a small pilot hole, like so, and then that way when I come in with the bigger bit that matches the diameter of the shaft, I can come in from the inside just a little bit and then go down to the outside and I won't mushroom out all the wood. Alright, there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that our potentiometers have enough shaft sticking out to get the nuts on. Another thing that you want to pay attention to on some of these potentiometers is they have a little stop right here. Um, and if that's not bent over, it won't sit flat. You'll actually have to drill a small hole for that tab to fit down in. Something else I've seen happen is you see uh, knobs getting hit and that will cause these tabs right here to pop up. So if you ever have a, a potentiometer that falls through the body, chances are that that is what's wrong. You can always take a tad bit of solder and seal those up if you need to. But the good thing about these is now we can take the tape off and we can put the nut on there and I like to use a tooth washer to keep everything in place so they don't spin and then once we get everything here we can flip it up and actually wire it with the back of the guitar open. Okay guys let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we're going to need first we're going to need a good soldering iron and we want something like a sponge or a paper towel that's wet and we want to make sure that we've got some kind of file to make sure that that tip stays clean and between solderings we need to put that tip on something wet and clean it so I like pushback wire I have three different colors here it's it has cloth on it and it's called pushback wire because you just simply push back and it is pre-tinned so you see that coming out now once you push it back you can choose to push it back forward when you make your connection but I 
love shrink wrap um, and I like putting where different things come together shrink wrapping the, the connections individually and doing the big harness at the end and shrink wrap um, I love pin end jacks not so much that I use them to put the strap on because they have a strap button but more so they're solid and sturdy and these things right here I really don't get into them too much unless they're on the side of a coffee can um, I've got capacitors I've got the nuts I need and the washers the tooth washers love those to stop everything from spinning and then of course you've got your pots potentiometers and they come in different ratings and they also come in different shaft sizes the big shafts have this little tab on them do you see it right there that sticks up uh, it's meant to put a hole in whatever it's in to situate it but if you forget it will make everything sit crooked so you can bend that over or snap it off if it doesn't work for you so let's get this thing flipped over and see what it is we're going to do i'm going to explain to you where things go and why and we'll whip through this i've done a couple videos about wiring and you can look those up they get into a little bit better detail but i want to make sure that the camera is where we can see it okay i think we're in a good spot right now i think the dog laid down and uh, he's good to go too uh, but let's start at the beginning i'm using a pickup that has two wires it's pretty simple it has a hot wire and it has this copper wire that's the ground now uh, these are usually covered so when you strip them you don't want to cut too deep into the hot wire and you also want to make sure that all the strands of the ground are wound up because all it takes is one of them and they're very small to touch everything and you've got a mess now when I'm telling you about making connections I will lengthen this wire out because it's like right on top of the um, potentiometer the wires a little short so I'm going to lengthen this out with some of this color-coded pushback wire and then when I make those connections I'll use a small one that's uh, shrink wrap that's red and of the appropriate size and do this and then the ground will be black or green depending and i'll make those with smaller pieces and then when it comes to cover everything up i will use so you'll have a wire coming back to here that's soldered and one to here and then i just take these and cover everything up and then uh, melt the shrink wrap and i'll have jumper wires going to here so let's talk about where uh, this stuff goes um, the volume pot here has three lugs this one goes to the pickup the center lug goes to your input jack and the third one gets bent over and soldered back into itself it's a ground once that's done i start jumping wires from that loud pickup truck I start jumping wires um, from the volume to the tone and then I'll put a capacitor here so I'd like these wires to not be too messy and be just long enough so in case I ever have to pull these out they'll come in one piece now I want to tell you if you ever have to pull wire that's already here in pots when you take these out you're going to put a piece of dental floss on them and when you pull them out that dental floss is still in the hole where your pot comes back through and you can feed the new one once you get them out of the sound hole up here okay guys i have jumped forward which is going to be good 
for the value of time you have left in your life because I seem to be long-winded. But anyway, I have taken two 500K potentiometers and put them upside down in their respective holes, meaning that this is the way they will sit inside the guitar upside down. Now, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right lugs because if you turn them around or get confused, things will be backwards. For example, you might notice right here that this lug, which is the furthest right on the volume control, is soldered back into itself where in a way that it mimics these ground wires. So let's go through these carefully. First off, the first lug Let's talk about this from a place we can see it. So let's pretend this is the volume potentiometer. This first lug, the one to the outside on the right, upside down, goes to the hot wire of the pickup. It also goes to the outside lug on the tone pot. So you can see here that we have a yellow wire that goes from the tone pot, you see that right there, to the outside wire on the volume pot, right there. Make notes if you need to. Now, how did this all turn out so neat? We'll have this piece of wood that I put the pots in. Let me see that we can see this. And it will hold them and give me just enough slack that we have here to make this loop right here. So once again, outside pot volume control lug to the right, this one on both volume and tone. Next, the center lug on the volume pot goes to the input jack. There is a positive and a ground on the input jack. It's my experience with this type of input jack that has two lugs. The tallest one is the ground. The shortest one is the hot wire. Again, that hot wire goes to the center lug of the the volume pot. Now, this lug on the volume pot bends over and solders into itself right there, and that's what we have here. Now, on the tone pot, where on the volume pot this would bend over and become ground, on the tone pot what we have is the capacitor goes from the outside right lug again potentiometer upside down back into itself which is a ground now I want to tell you a little story here this capacitor if you solder this just like it is, you are going to burn up the capacitor. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a couple of alligator clips. And before you solder anything, you're going to put one there. And you're going to put one on the other side on the thin wire. Like so. Then and only then will you make your connection to the lug and to the bottom of the potentiometer because these will serve as heat sinks, meaning it's not heat shrink, it's heat sink, meaning that all the heat coming from the soldering iron through that thin little wire will get blocked by this before it burns up your tone capacitor. Always remember that. Have a couple of these inside your shrink wrap 
Oh, look at that. Don't spill this. Always keep this closed. So, now we need to jump the ground wire from the volume pot to the tone pot. You see that? The hot wire from the pickup here. I love these. And the reason is, is because if I have to disconnect this, I typically don't have to take out the pickup. And if I can just disconnect these, hot, ground, and plug those in just like that, I'm fine. The ground wire from the pickup goes to a wire cluster here where there are several different grounding opportunities one for the, again, ground on the pickup, one to jump from volume to tone, one to go to ground to the input jack, and then finally, the most important one you don't want to forget is this will be the ground that grounds your strings or your bridge to get rid of that buzz that you will have if you do not ground your strings. You can tell if that's the case because if you've got everything wired up and you hear a buzz and the minute you touch the strings the buzz goes away something is wrong with your ground that comes here. So one more time. Volume pot turned upside down far right hot wire to your pickup center lug goes to your hot wire to your input jack. The third lug is grounded back into itself. Tone pot, jumper from the same lug that has your hot wire from your input jack. There is nothing in the middle. And then the outside right one is for your capacitor for your tone pot again everything gets grounded now another little hint here when I split the wiring that's coming out of the lead to the pickup I'm gonna peel everything back I'm gonna put a couple wires on here that lengthen this I'm gonna insulate both of those with shrink wrap on each one so they never touch each other then I'm going to put a big piece of shrink wrap over the top of both of those pull it into place where everything is covered and you got to kind of watch how much slack you give everything here because if you don't the grounding police will come looking for you that's what that siren is right there while I waste some time trying to pull this into place. And then when I cannot see any connections there, you see how those are? I turn that upside down and I start the barbecue grill. Look at that. Now, I take the black wire and plug it in here like so and I take the hot wire and go to the jumper coming off the pot why can't I ever get these lined up? I should put a little dot on these or something. There we go. Now, when I take this apart to put these off, I can either disconnect these and put them back together. But my wiring harness is complete, except I have to drill a hole. I'm going to put this input jack over here. I'm going to put a piece of metal around it. I am not going to use the strap P 
pin. In fact, I'm gonna put some fancy uh, strap pins on here. And the only thing I have to do now is get this inside of the guitar and use my place for this ground wire to attach to there somehow and my circuit is complete. Sorry to keep going over this, but draw it out. I swear I have to watch my own video to remember how to do this. All right, I think that's a good place to stop this one. We've got everything in here. Um, and we've got a little tidying up to do to put some zip ties on some things so nothing's rattling around in here but um, the end pin input jack needs some reinforcement with a piece of metal and we have the back of this thing is going to end up being this oil rig lease sign and before we start permanently attaching this thing believe this or not we want to stabilize the finish there are some marks here um, and some gouges and things I want to keep the character of this and how tore up it is there's also some um, cracks and gouges out of the neck that we're going to um, put some resin epoxy in but we've got to glue the bridge on we got to do some stuff here but I will tell you what this thing is wired for sound it will play we can go on the hunt for strings now I may string it up just with six strings initially to see what it's going to sound like but I'm pretty happy with the way this is going along. We're going to see this thing come together pretty quick now. I think the next episode is going to be a little bit shorter and I'm going to show you how to do some finish work to get rid of some of these big marks we have on here. But um, I am going to be really happy when I take this back to Guitar 48 and show them what happened to the dried out mess that was in the window remember there's a complete start to finish playlist up here if you're really bored and you find a, a guitar that's just completely busted up cracked uh, body uh, a mess neck in bad shape just about anything that could go wrong with a guitar it is in this playlist so hey for those of you that stick through to the end, thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't. And we're going to make this thing come together now. So I'll see you soon.